Hey, what's up, what's up, family? I uh, hope everybody having a great day. Just wrapped up week 12 of our Devotional Journal Book Club. Today's topic was, are you eating? Which essentially means, what is your spiritual diet? And when we think about the word, you know, the word or the concept around spiritual diet essentially means, what are we consuming on a daily basis, weekly basis, and even monthly basis as it relates to spiritual our our spiritual walk with God, our relationship with God, the things that we're consuming on a daily basis. So when we think about the word diet, we think about, you know, meal prepping. And that was the analogy that we talked about in this devotional this week, is that when you think about a diet, if you have a goal in mind, there's something that you want to achieve. So you put in you're putting these things in place to ensure that you reach that goal, right? Um, so if it's, you know, you working out and you're meal prepping your food, you're like, my goal is to lose 10 pounds. So I'm going to make sure I'm eating, eating this amount of calories. I'm eating these snacks because you want to make sure that you reach that target. So now if we look at that from a spiritual perspective, our walk with God, our spiritual diet, what things are we consuming in the morning? What things are we consuming in the afternoon, in the evening, and even in between those times, like a snack? You know, because when we think about the things that we eat on a normal basis, the average human is eating a breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, and maybe some dessert after that. So from that perspective, if we're able to align our spiritual life to fall in that room, at least that's just the foundation of saying, you know what? I'm going to make sure I'm praying to God in the morning. You know, between that time of, of uh, breakfast and lunch, I'm praying, I'm, I'm reading the Bible. Like all of these times that you normally would eat and consume actual food, we need to consume, you know, uh, spiritual food. So whether that's fasting, praying, um, just taking time out to read the word. These are all things that's going to help us in our spiritual walk with God, our, our, our intimacy with God, because we cannot expect for um, us to be strong spiritually if we're not consuming anything that's of God. Like we can't assume like, oh, you know what? I'm just reading the Bible here and there and then think that our spiritual man is going to be strong enough to handle the spiritual warfare of, of the devil, trying to attack us every day, trying to kill and destroy all the things that we're doing, trying to kill and destroy us. We have to be able to understand like we have to be strong. And it even says that in the Bible, like about, you know, you know, um, when you were a child, you thought like a child, but since I'm a man, I've grown up. Like you have to grow up and change the way that we're thinking, change the way that we're our outlook on life to understand that now that we're older, we have to dive into the word. We have to read the word. We have to take time to digest it and understand it and analyze it to say, okay, what am I reading? How can I implement it? And then go from there because we cannot just be readers of the word. We also have to be doers of the word. So that means that as we're reading things from the Bible every day, we can't just consume it just for our own knowledge, but we have to be able to say, okay, now when I'm in that difficult situation at work, or I'm in traffic and someone cuts me off, or you know what, I'm having a difficult conversation with my spouse, we have to be able to implement the word of God. We have to be able to show the love, show the grace, show the mercy, all the things that God um, uh, uh, encompasses, we have to be able to share that to the people that are around us because sometimes we're the only Bible that people are going to uh, read. We're the only God that's God interaction that some people are going to have because they don't have anybody around them or they're, they're completely in a space where they're not even looking for God. But if we can be, you know, uh, a representation of God in that moment, that's the perfect opportunity for us to do that. So that's why it's important for us to have the spiritual diet that we need, that God encourages us to have, because we have to be ready at all times to be able to share the word, share why we follow God, share why we are believers, because it's going to make a huge impact on other people's lives. Not only ours, because we already have the personal relationship with God, but what about the people who don't have it? How can we be able to set up things like this where it's people I don't know that's going to be watching this video that's going to be able to say, wow, I'm encouraged. I'm inspired from what he said, and now I can implement it. And I hope that that's food or seed that's planted in the ground and say, you know what? Let me actually pick up my Bible and read more. Hey, let me actually start praying a little bit harder. Let me actually get a better relationship with God so that I can be in tune with what he wants me to do in my life. So that was what we talked about as it relates to spiritual diet. But then the other part about it, taking it a step further is the removal 
of people, places, and things that are not aligned with God. And this was a tough one because we all talked about this on the call. There's things that we love, things that we enjoy, things that we like, that we know it's not aligned with God. It's clear as day. We know that we have to remove those things. And I shared it in a devotional journal this week that um, I wouldn't tell anybody or encourage somebody to go cold turkey and just cut it completely off. The goal is to remove it out completely. As we talked about early on with a, with a physical diet, you can't just say, oh, I'm just removing this out completely because then that's going to make you so hard in the beginning that where you end up falling off and not even sticking to your diet, sticking to your weight, your, your health and wellness goals. Same thing from a spiritual perspective. How can you set up things to say, okay, you know what? Instead of me consuming this show X amount of times a week, Maybe I'm going to break it down to this point. Maybe um, instead of me listening to this certain podcast, I'm going to find another one that talks about maybe God, like changing it up just a little bit, giving yourself something to find that diet. And, and like I said, it's so perfect to relate it to the physical diet, because if you're going on a meal prep, you have to find those foods that you like. Some stuff that's healthy is, doesn't taste good, but you have to find things that work with you and your own walk with God. Like, okay, you know what? I'm taking this out, but I'm able to get, replace it with this, but it's going to get me closer to God. And that's where we have to be of removing those things. And so when we look at those things, we know, you know, like thinking about how are we consuming content every single day. So the conversations that we have, the TV shows that we watch, podcasts, reading books, the community, the fellowship that we have, look at those five things right there and understand like, okay, where are my areas of opportunity? Where can I attack them to be better in my spiritual diet? Do I need to change the people that I'm hanging around, the community, the fellowship? Do I need to change the conversations? Am I gossiping about people? Am I talking about low frequency conversations, things that are not edifying to my body, to uh, my spiritual body, as well as other people as well, or edifying and glorifying God? Do I need to remove those things out? TV shows, things that are not aligned with God, we need to cut those things out. Regardless if we've been watching them since we was kids, everybody in your family watch them. We understand now from reading the Bible, the things that we have to remove that God is not aligned with. And that's why in the Bible, it says like the word of God is coming to break up, you know, um, you know, um, you know, husband versus wife, uh, son versus father, son-in-law versus um, father-in-law, mother versus uh, uh, the, the daughter versus her, her mother. And I, I remember reading that as a kid, like, well, why would God come and divide that? Because these same exact things that we're talking about right now, if there's something that has been going on in your family for the X amount of years, and now today you're like, man, I'm reading a word and it's not aligned with God. We have to be aligned with God, not people. And those people sometimes could be our family, our friends, the people we love the most, but we have to realize where we have to go, or the focus is supposed to be God. That's the person that we're aiming to get to because if we can get to him, we know that we have eternal life. Getting to a family member, your friend, your mom, your uncle, that's not going to get us into heaven. So sometimes it's a difficult thing to do when we have to break those relationships. Um, not saying to break them, but I'm saying have a, a conversation that's going to be um, digestible for both sides and say, hey, this is what I'm doing now. And if they want to go, they want to go. But sometimes they get upset if you don't want to go because you have changed your direction of saying, I'm going this way. If God is this way, I'm going this way. If God is not there, I don't want to be there. And that's the way that we have to be and understand that if some people's feelings are hurt, that's what's got to happen. Because if we're pleasing God, that's the only person that we got to focus on. Uh, we can't please everybody. We can't please people. Um, and so the last thing that I'll leave you guys with is um, actually two things is uh, self-awareness. This one is very important, kind of even talking about what we just shared about understanding what we're consuming on a daily basis is having the self-awareness of understanding what's around you and understanding even the spiritual realm. You know, because right now we're in the physical realm. We're just looking at this, but there's a spiritual realm. The only way that we can connect with the spiritual realm is through prayer. So if we're not praying, we're not even exercising our power, our spiritual power, our, our the Holy Spirit that's within us, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the cross and, and, and has him alive on the right hand of God right now is the same spirit that is within us and that had given us power to do all things. So we have to be able to tap into that. And if we're not praying, then we're not, we're not using that power. And so that's why it's so important to be aware of the, not only this physical realm of what's going around us, but what is going on in the spiritual realm to then now be able to pray 
over those things, to speak words over those things that are aligned with the Bible, speaking those scriptures and talking to God and saying, God, this is where you said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. So I know that you won't leave me. You won't leave my marriage. You won't leave my children. You know that you'll protect us. These are all the con the conversations that we have to have in prayer to allow God to know, like, listen, I'm going off your promises. This is what you promised me. I'm holding on to this. And this is what I'm sharing. And so then now those things in the spiritual can move. Now them, the angels, God is moving. The Holy Spirit is moving to move these things out of our life, the obstacles, the adversity, the things that we don't need. Not saying that adversity won't come in our life, but we, we're in a better place when we know that God is with us. When God is with us, we can accomplish all things. But if we're just going on about our life and we're not praying, we're not reading, we're not fasting, you can't expect victory in your life if God is not with you. It's going to be a really hard battle, an uphill battle that's you're never going to win that. So just make sure that God is with you and being aware of that um, from your own internal self. And then the last things I'll leave you guys with is some best practices um, to keep a good spiritual diet. So I want to share these things, three things. So the first one is scheduling prayer and uh, scheduling prayer and reading the Bible time on your schedule every week. So that essentially means like not putting other things in your schedule. The first thing that goes on your weekly, your daily schedule is your schedule with God. Like, okay, how am I praying on Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third, and so on. How am I designing that? Am I going to wake up early to make sure I read? Am I going to read during my lunchtime? I'm going to read before my dinner. Like having that laid out. Same thing goes with our prayer life. How are you going to pray throughout your day? Obviously there's things that come up. You're going to pray, you know, throughout the day as things come up, but just having that foundation in place of how am I attacking this week? From a spiritual standpoint. Secondly, take your time. The time that you have with God is so important. And oftentimes we'll try to speed up the process, like having a microwave relationship with God. And God, like, no, don't don't just come to me and just talk to me for five minutes. Hey, thank you, Gordon. Thank you for this day. Let's have a good day. Bye. Boom. Like, no, we got to spend time with God. Like, let's really sit down, break bread with God, talk to him. And some of the things that I do as another best practice, I, oftentimes I'll just say, God, like, how is your day going? You know, what is it that I can help you with? Because now that shows that I'm not just coming to him, just asking for something, but I'm saying, what can I do? How can you use me today? Open my eyes, open my heart to be willing when that opportunity comes across me, that I'm willing to jump on it to, again, be a representation of him, to glorify his name. So that's the second one. The third one, which was really great, someone brought this up on a call, was creating an alarm clock system. So essentially, creating um, times where your, your alarm clock goes off on your phone and say, it's time to pray. It's time to read. So then now, again, going back to that first point of a best practice, now we have that reminder that's going to show up on your phone. We all have devices. We're all stay, you know, connected to our phones. Um, so that's a perfect way for us to be reminded every single week how to stay in tune with God. So those are the best practices. I appreciate you guys for watching. A lot of great information. I was excited to share with you guys, and I hope that it's a blessing for you guys. If you guys are interested in joining the book club, please check the description. You'll see the link for the book. We're only on week 12, so come on and join the phone. We got 50 more weeks. We're meeting as a, as a community, but now even a family to talk about God and help us all get closer and closer to God. So to God be the glory. Y'all have a great week. Peace.